everyone, and welcome to week six of Math 130. Last week, we began a two-week series covering probability, and we learned some important rules and formulas, such as the addition rule, the complement rule, and the multiplication rule for independent events. This week, we will see even more probability concepts, and we will look at the probability rules for dependent events, as well as some counting techniques called permutations and combinations. Sometimes, if one event occurs, it will affect the probability of another event occurring. In such cases, the events are dependent. For example, suppose someone asked you what the probability was that the ground was wet outside. Well, if you live in Southern California like me, you might say the probability was pretty low. But what if someone asked you what the probability was that the ground was wet outside, given that it was raining? Now that is altogether different. The probability of the ground being wet now is very high. The likelihood of the ground being wet depended on the state of the rain. When we have dependent probabilities, we denote them in this way. This is read as the probability of A given event B. In other words, what is the probability of A occurring given that B occurred? When events are dependent, the multiplication rule that we learned last week changes to the probability of A and B equals probability of A times the probability of B given A. Our other concept for week six will be permutations and combinations. Say we have a large group of things, and from that group, we want to select a smaller group from it. There are two ways we can do this. Permutations and combinations. In permutations, the order in which the things are selected matters. In other words, if I select A, then B, then C, that is a different event than if I select C, then A, then B. A change in the order marks a brand new event. In combinations, the order does not matter. Selecting A, then B, then C is the same event as selecting C, then A, then B. All that matters is the elements that we selected and not what order in which they were selected. If we had n total things and from them we wanted to select r things, the formula to calculate how many ways we could do this are these for permutations and combinations. What are those little exclamation points, you might ask? Those are called factorials. A factorial means that you take the number in front of the factorial symbol, the exclamation point, and multiply that number to every positive whole number less than it. So 5 factorial would equal 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 120. In week six, your 6-2 My Math Lab homework assignment is due at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. Please make sure that you check out all the resources to help you this week. This includes your reading from your textbook, the resources posted in the Module 6 folder, the announcements, and the discussion boards, and don't forget about the free tutoring at the Academic Support tab. And remember, I am here. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help you in week six. Good luck.